Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to explain what a padstone is and then go through a simple example on how to design one. So what is a padstone? Well, a padstone is essentially a spreader for a steel beam or a lintel. And like the name kind of suggests, it's there to spread the load so that the concentrated load is spread over a longer distance so that it doesn't essentially crush the masonry. What you'll tend to find in masonry structures is that the capacity for supporting a concentrated load without any form of spreader is actually very, very low. So basically on your drawings, you're basically going to be wanting to specify a padstone whenever you've got a steel beam bearing directly onto a masonry wall. Unless the end reaction of the steel beam is very, very small, you're almost guaranteed to need a padstone. There are basically two configurations of how a steel beam can be bearing onto a wall. The first way is what I've shown here where the beam is spanning perpendicular to the wall. The other way is where the beam is spanning in plane of the wall and is typically bearing at the end of the panel. This is very common when you're creating an opening in an existing wall. The stress distribution or the load spread is very very simple for the first configuration. The load is basically spread at a 45 degree angle and provided that you've got enough length of wall it will spread uniformly and you basically don't have any high peaks of stress. In the second configuration though, because the beam is at the edge, you've actually got a very high concentrated load. So the stress distribution is not gonna be uniform and it's actually gonna have a very, very high peak where the steel beam is bearing. The example I'm gonna show you next is how to design the padstone for the first configuration. I'll do a design example of the second configuration in another video. So please remember to like and subscribe, smash that notification bell, to get notified for when I do upload that video. Okay, so moving on to the example. We have a beam bearing onto the middle of a wall with a factored ultimate limit state end reaction force of 70 kilonewtons. The wall is going to be made up of seven newton block work with M6 mortar, means that the characteristic strength of the masonry is 3.86 newtons per millimeter squared. You can find these values in the Structural Engineer's Pocketbook or the Red Book, which I highly recommend you get. The steel beam size is going to be a 254 by 146 by 31 UB. The wall is going to be 100mm thick. The material safety factor gamma is 3 for masonry and the bearing factor for this configuration, beta, is going to be 1.25. So the first check you actually want to do is to see if you actually even need a padstone. So you want to work out the stress under the beam. And that's simply done by taking the force, 70 kilonewtons, divided by the area, so at the 100 mil, by the width of the beam, 146. So that gives you a stress of 4.79 newtons per millimeter squared. So now we need to check this value against the resistance or an allowable bearing stress. And to calculate this, you need to multiply the bearing factor with the characteristic strength of the masonry divided by the material safety factor. Plug these values in and we get an allowable bearing stress of 1.61 newtons per millimeter squared. Because this allowable bearing stress is less than our applied stress, that means we need to spread the load using a padstone. Padstones can be cast in situ or they can actually bought with set dimensions. Because I think buying a padstone from a shop directly is much quicker and more cost effective than casting a padstone in situ, I'm going to be checking my design with a standard padstone size, and the size of a padstone typically coincides with a normal block. Padstones can be bought using different concrete strengths, so in this example we're going to try a C20 concrete grade. So like before, we actually want to check the stress on the beam is not going to exceed the allowable stress of the concrete. So all we do is multiply the bearing factor of 1.25 with the concrete grade divided by material safety factor of 3. And we get an allowable bearing stress of 8.33 newtons per millimeter squared. We already calculated the stress under the beam earlier, which came out to 4.79 newtons per millimeter squared. And as we can see, this value is less than the allowable concrete stress Therefore, the concrete grade is okay. So now we want to check the stress under the padstone. Because of the height of the padstone, we can see that the 45 degree spread from the edge of the steel beam is going to be more than enough to spread across the length of the padstone. So like calculating any form of stress is the force of area. So the stress is simply 70 kilonewtons divided by 440 by 100. 
and this gives us a stress of 1.59 newton per millimeter squared. Again, previously we had already worked out the allowable masonry stress and that came to 1.61 newtons per millimeter squared. So because the allowable stress is greater than the stress applied of 1.59, therefore the size of the pad stone is adequate. So at the end of any calculation, it's always nice to summarize what you're going to specify. In this case, we're going to specify a 440 by 215 by 100 C20 pad stone, and the required bearing of the steel beam is going to be 100 mil. Hopefully you found this video useful. Please remember to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.